You'll see comments coming up on here, so you can tell me if there's anything I really want okay. to uh, address. Um, in fact, why don't, if you could just no, jump on your phone and see. Is there audio monitoring on this at all? No. No, that'd be far too oh, high that, tech. Yeah, so you gotta... Look at that. Watch live now, sweet. And we're gonna see what this actually does. Whew, that is cold. <laughs> All right. Waiting. It says waiting for Joseph. That's interesting. Oh, okay. You're live there. It says I'm live. Ooh. Man. You want to grab the broom and do a little sweep sweep? Let's get some of the... Somebody says, am I first? Am I first? Yes, you are, my friend. Yes, you are. Ooh. All right, I got you. You got me, and you can see it there, and uh -huh. it's all working. Excellent. All right, guys. Ten seconds away. That's, all good. That's great. Okay, cool. So, well, good morning, everybody. Check and see if people can hear you. I want to make yeah, sure. Yeah, you guys, make sure, make sure, let's make sure that you guys can hear me. Okay, I'm going to walk over here and keep on talking. We're on a wireless lab. Um, this all should be working, but just let me know uh, in the comments if you can still hear me clearly. We are. Uh, Sean's got it. He's checking it as well, but he doesn't have headphones on, so we can't really we know for sure whether you guys can hear me or not. Just say something in the comments whether you can hear me, and then we'll know we're good to go. Um, yeah, just pick an area where that guy's not skating and awesome. Any, anybody saying whether they can hear me or not? No. Oh, uh, watching from Poland. Holy watching crap. from Poland. That's fantastic. And we're complaining uh, about the cold. Well, here, you can, you can hear. It's so there, so does it. It sounds good. Yeah, it's good. Okay, right on. So we're good on the audio. Well, howdy. Welcome from Poland. That is fantastic. Yeah, sounds good. Okay. Well, let, well, let's check out the, the uh, mo, mo, what's this thing called again? The Osmo, the Osmo ability of this thing. Right. Can you, can you just grab it and go? How's that work? I uh, technically, uh, I can. Not really. Cause it's, all plugged in. <laughs> Cause it's all plugged in. So what do you, what do you got there? But I mean, I could, I could, you know, shift around like this. Right. But you want to like carry it and follow <laughs> me around. That's, there's no quick release off of this thing. You'd have to go off the whole head there, wouldn't you? See, is that going to work? We're see, playing with something. So we're live today from the app that I've been using before, which now I completely forgot the name of, um, through the iPhone. But the iPhone is hooked up to the new DJI Osmo mobile, mobile is what it's called. It holds your iPhone. Now, we had to do a little funky rigging to be able to get the microphone on it and to balance on it, but it seems to be working. Now, it's set up on a tripod right now, and Sean is going to delicately try and remove this and see what happens if he takes this off the tripod. <laughs> and can start following me around. Um, here we go, look at that, there we go. Cool, so now we're mobile with the Osmo. All right, so let's talk about this GH5 a little bit. So if you saw any of the video yesterday, you saw this thing just came in, I just got it. This is a uh, pre-production unit, so this does not have final firmware, and this is day one of two days of testing that we're gonna get to do with this thing. It is, so far from what I've seen, pretty stinking remarkable. Now, one of the really interesting things about the follow focus is that you have an incredible amount of control over it. And let's see here, if we take, I don't know, if, can, you, can you get in close and look at this menu at all? Can you see that? So you see you've got this thing called AF Custom Settings. And we go in here and set this, and you can change your autofocus speed, and you can change your autofocus sensitivity. Now, what is ideal for a different type of situation is yet to be known. This is something that we are gonna have to work with and test with. So I'm gonna leave it at zero, zero to start with, and we'll see what kind of, uh, what kind of results we get out of that. And from there, we'll know more about the types of settings that you want for a particular type of shooting. Now, I know right away in my head, the first thing I'm thinking is, why do I even have to set this at all? And I don't, I don't have a good answer for you on that, and I will try to get an answer for you on that. But because uh, I know with, um, you know with your Nikon's, Canons, whatever, you're in continuous focus mode. It's just, it just works, right? That's it. You don't have to do any settings in there. So I'm not sure why. I don't know if it's, has a, it's an accuracy. You can get it better by having these controls, but the downside is you have to set the controls. I don't know. We're going to find out, but I will be setting, playing with those in different settings today um, on says, our tests. Uh, I wish they would come out with a 16.9 sensor. would be so much better for video. Um, okay, so someone's saying they wish they'd come out with a 16.9 sensor. would be so much better for video. That's not true. It would not be better for video because right now what you're using on this camera is the full sensor the full width of it. You're just not using the top and bottom when you're using, uh, when you're shooting in 16 by nine. You're not scaling up at all, 
right? On this, you are, if anything, you're scaling down if you're going into the one of the lower res modes. So that bigger sensor, and it is a bigger sensor than what you need to do just 16 by nine, is actually an advantage. That's giving you more so you have more flexibility. For example, when you're shooting an anamorphic, so you're shooting in a four, three aspect ratio, and you're using the whole sensor and then de-squeezing it later, you are getting something you could not do if you had a native 16 by nine sensor. So a 16 by nine sensor natively wouldn't give you any advantage here at all, um, unless I'm completely misunderstanding the technology, but I don't think I am. So there you go. Um, great question though, great comment, I love that. So we're here at a skate park, our skater is not here yet, but he's gonna show up hopefully sooner or later. And we're gonna start doing some, some shooting with this camera here at the park. Now I'm gonna be going through, as I explained in the GH5 video yesterday, which if you haven't seen that, do check that out, my little kind of first look at it in the studio. Um, we're gonna be, we're gonna be testing a bunch of different things over the next couple of days. We are going to shoot both stills and video. We're gonna be looking at focus tracking quite a bit because that is one of the major, major significant enhancements and improvements on this camera. So we're definitely gonna be spending some time on that. Uh, we're gonna be shooting in, in 4K or UHD 60p. We're also gonna shoot at, uh, at the 1080p settings with the VFR, the variable frame rate, and to crank that thing all the way up to 180 frames per second and get some really cool slow motion. Now the weather out here, as you can see, it's not quite frightful, but it ain't exactly ideal either. Now it's actually really good for shooting because we have a nice overcast, we're not gonna have hard shadows, but um, it also could start raining, it's windy and it's cold. But hey, you know, that's just the way it is. If it starts raining, then we get to check out the waterproofness of this camera. And if the camera fails, then we know that the waterproofing failed. And uh, luckily this iPhone is waterproof. Too. And luckily that iPhone is waterproof as well. So, uh, so I think we're good to go in the weather. I've got my Shure mic on here, which I guess is a bit of a giveaway on which mic I liked best out of the microphone test. That video, by the way, is done, is edited, should be complete. I just need to take a, a final look at it and then we'll get that thing uploaded. And says, are you take stills or videos? I'm gonna do both stills and video with this thing. And I've got this camera rigged up just like I had my GH4. Got my little belt clip on there so I can go nice and nice and freedom, nice and mobile on there. Um, love that. And then my little mini tripody stand, this little Manfrotto guy that I love so much on the bottom of this. So all that is working out great. You can see I have access to the battery even with all this on there, which is also a great thing. I have two memory cards in here. I have programmed it so that video goes to one card and stills go to the other, both RAW and JPEG, which I think is a fantastic way to configure that thing. And I guess that's about it. We're going to start <laughs> off with... We got people bickering about the uh, uh, sensor size. People are here. bickering about the sensor <laughs> yeah, size. That's exactly. fantastic. I love it. I love it. It's good. It's good. It's Conversation good. is good. <laughs> and hey, here's something I'll show you that I didn't realize yesterday because I didn't have it on here. So this is the lens shade for this lens. This is the new 12 to uh, 60 Leica lens. But check this out on the lens shade, this little magical button right there, it's a lock. Put that on there. Oops, put it on the right way, let's try that again. There we go, start the right way, and it's locked and the lens shade can't come off. That is fantastic. One of those little tiny things you go, <laughs> why doesn't everybody do that? Love that. All right, uh, I guess that's about it. You guys continue bickering all you want about the sensor size. Um, anybody who says you can't get shallow depth of field on micro four thirds, for those of you that know better, please correct them. I'm getting tired of, of having to correct that, uh, that sentiment over and over again. You absolutely can get shallow depth of field on micro four thirds. Yes, you can get shallower depth of field on a full frame sensor, but you know where you can get even shallower depth of field? Medium frame, brother, so a medium format. So unless you're shooting medium format or large format sensors, I don't wanna hear any whining about shallow depth of field. Smaller sensor does give you less shallow depth of field. That is true. That is why we have lenses like the Noctocron F1.2, the 25mm 1.2, the uh, Xing, 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 Xing Now, whatever the hell it is, the Chinese lens that I love so much that is an F.95. There are lenses out there that will give you that extreme shallow depth of field without question. So, all right, with that, we're gonna call it off. Let that thing run for 20 seconds so that people can click on all the things that'll get added here later on. See you later, guys, bye-bye. This is where the music plays. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I don't know. I got, I got some music on there. Uh, it's funny. I'm going to look at these little people arguing about it. This is fantastic. Has it been 20 seconds? Close enough to it. All right, go ahead and stop that.